I'm running here to the Leslie Heller workspace. I'm gonna look at a sculpture show by Jim Osman titled The Walnut Series. I'm giving you a pre-opening preview of this exhibition. I was uh, down in Minus Space in Dumbo last night and I saw Jim there. He said, make sure you come by for the opening, but that's next Wednesday. So uh, I'm gonna sneak in here early Well, this should make some of our sculpture fans happy. We'll try to paste a couple of views of some sculpture shows together. This piece is titled Still 2018 Wood. Okay, so the title of the show is Walnut. But if I'm not mistaken, this is like white pine. Or maybe he's got some fur in there as well. Well, I've known Jim for a while and uh, I always was amazed at his uh, craftsmanship. He also uh, curates a little project out in Brooklyn about a block away from my loft. I think they call it the Art Yard. I guess you could probably Google that and if he's still doing it, you could make a proposal. Okay, now here is some Walnut, I think. It's titled Here and There Corner 2018 Wood and Paint 50 and 3 quarters by 15 and a quarter by 11. So I've seen a couple of shows by Jim and one of the other things aside from his uh, his great uh, woodworking skills is that uh, he's got some uh, pretty good color sense and uh, in a lot of ways he's kind of a uh, painter that's uh, found other means to it get his colors out there. So I like the, the idea of this uh, plinth. And uh, so we've got some boxes and uh, kind of uh, a riff on maybe Donald Judd. Okay, we've got some little shelf-sized pieces. This is titled Start 03, 2018, Wooden Paint. Start 02, 5 by 3 and 3 quarters by 1 and 3 quarters. Start 01. Okay, so we sort of extrapolate from that. Is that where we're going? 3 by 2 and a quarter by 1. Wooden paint. of the the layout okay 
well. It's titled Blue March 2018 Wood Paint Pigmented Plaster Tree Elements. Now, okay, we're gonna pay attention to the uh, to the plinths because Jim likes to play little well <laughs> tricks where he likes to make variations, slight variations in the designs. So pay attention. Uh, and again, it's actually even just the uh, the difference between the colors of the the walnut and the pine. Maybe it could be poplar or fir. That adds a coloristic element. And uh, yeah, he's uh, very articulate with some of his well, elements. Again, now check out the way that he's designed his, his little plinths. Slight variations again. It's titled Bloom. Wood paint, cast paint, and faux wood paneling. I also think that uh, there is a kind of uh, cubism, or at least the influence of a kind of cubism with some of this work, and that then I guess would even extend out into some of the uh, constructivist sculptures that uh, some of the Russians were doing back in the teens and 20s of the last century. Okay, this piece is 55 by 18 by 11 and a quarter. Okay, and we've got another little tricky move there. It's got us legs coming down onto the box. This is titled Maroon. Twenty eighteen wood paint cast paint. Which is that stuff? And tree elements. He's using these lines of his grain as a uh, kind of a graphic element. This is Orange Alley, 2018, Wood and Paint. So I like his little slots and his dowel work.
I think the other thing that's interesting to note is that uh, because he is starting out with his uh, basic wood colors, that uh, all the paint elements that he puts on there kind of have to uh, harmonize with your basic brown tones. This is Deck 2018, wood paint. Okay, let's look at the base again. It's like XH. Fifty-nine and a half by 24 by 15. Yeah, in some ways, these almost have a uh, an architectural sense to them. Oh, now we'll take a look at a couple in the back room. titled West. Fifty-one by fourteen and an eighth by fourteen. That's very nice. Okay, I like it. And deck two. This is 2018 wood paint, 54 and a half by 14 by 11 and three quarters. And, uh, well, I'm going to have to ask Jim what kind of paint he's using, if this is uh, gouache or acrylic. Could be latex. Well, we've come back for Jim Osmond's opening here. What was the title of the show? Is Walnut something? The Walnut Series. The Walnut Series. I've got a question for you, Jim. Why is it walnut? Why not maple or cherry or mahogany? You know, sometimes uh, Providence gives you options which you... Don't tell me there was a walnut tree somewhere around your no, neighborhood. Uh, two, two friends gave me big collections of like walnut scraps from shops and I just had a chance to work with stuff that was kind of pre-made, pre-found, cut off, and then have a lot of history in their making. And I just started to build with them and collage, and that's what the whole show is about, collaging. Yes, by assemblage. Stacking and bringing together, and then in some cases applying color, but with the yes. pieces going raw. You mentioned color, and uh, I'm not going to get too strung out on this, but the work, I mean, the, the color of the wall, and it also kind of affects your palette, because you're... You bill yourself as a sculptor, but in a lot of ways you also use a lot of what I would call very sensitive color things and very kind of interestingly placed color elements. So the walnut, is is that a different element for you too? It's kind of a found color and, and the fact that walnut has a big variety from the heartwood to the new wood 
and then you get these beautiful purples the way you cut it. Yes, yeah. Uh, and what I found was, and this is another sculptor said to me, the, the, the photographers had told me that the walnut absorbs light and the color reflects it. So oh. you get this nice split, that nice like uh, dichotomy between wood absorbing color and light and the color bouncing it back. So it made this kind of nice thing where I had planes in two different places at once. All right, sounds good. Well, congratulations on the show. And what was it again? Walnut Project? The Walnut Series. The Walnut Series. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thanks so much, Mark. James Com reporting on Jim Osman, the Walnut Series. Here at Leslie Heller, formerly known as the Leslie Heller Workspace. 54 Orchard Street. Ken Price, 1935 to 2012, was born in Los Angeles. His first one-person exhibition opened at LA's legendary Ferris Gallery in 1960 when he was just 25. Critics lauded his work from its original, for its originality. Lucie Lepard wrote, no one else on either the East or West Coast is working like Ken Price. In later years, Price had one-person exhibitions at the Menil Collection in Houston, the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis, the Chinita Foundation in Marfa, Texas, and in 2012, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art presented a retrospective of his work, which traveled to the National Sculpture Center in D Dallas, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. It's titled Zoma. Fired and painted clay, 15 by 12 by 15 inches. Well, I've been Looking at Ken's work for, <laughs> let's just say since the uh, last millennium. And uh, one of the things that I think is interesting is that uh, this is Neil Grum, 1994, fired in painted clay, is that not only is it interesting as ceramics and as sculpture, but um, in his late work, he also went in and started doing some very interesting things with painting. This is titled Idella, 2010 fired and painted clay. And uh, yeah, if you get up and look at some of these surfaces, and I'm not sure exactly how he would paint these, but it looks like there's some 
some sanding and maybe some polishing that goes along with this. This is Lucy 2010, 14 by 9 by 7. And, uh, well, thinking some of these forms kind of also make me think of Louise Bourgeois. It's a kind of a sensual forms. This is titled Mounds. If that's after the candy bar, it does kind of look like we've got little almonds planted in there. So I like the uh, it's almost like a copper metallic quality to some of these. Fat Sun. Yeah, some of these have a nice uh, kind of biomorphic connotation. And uh, yeah, the little uh, opening into the interior is mysterious. And this. Uh, this fading rainbow is nice. There's this uh, nice kind of flat fracture with a hole in it. As if this was a uh, just a fragment of a larger piece somehow. Titled formerly the slump. I think this might be my favorite piece in the show. Oh god, there's all kinds of uh, strange connotations, but um, yeah, as far as the the surface and the uh, the painting, yeah, that's beautiful. and painted clay. Pearl wave. I think uh, maybe Ken Price and Peter Volkus would be two of the most uh, recognized artists that resurrected the whole idea of the uh, fine art of ceramics. At least they did a lot, especially on the West Coast. It's titled Miraskew. His, I like the cavities and the horns. This is titled Crooken.
Okay, there's a lot of references there, and this probably would be a piece that I would say is most related to uh, Louise Bourgeois, at least as far as the sculptural forms. It's titled Pennies. Yeah, okay, I have to believe that he was making some uh, comic gestures. It is a kind of a cartoon pop surrealism. F-E-W. Twelve and a half by twelve and three quarters by thirteen and a half. Okay, here's the showstopper. This is titled Lying Around, 2009. This is painted bronze and composite. 41 and 3 quarters by 93 by 61. Well, I've been talking a little bit recently about some of the uh, contemporary tropes and uh, the shiny surface, the kind of golds and silvers and bronzes that you might see in a Jeff Koons or some earlier Damien Hirst have really become a kind of a sign of the times, a, a marker, a popular uh, contemporary trope for sculpture. a little different. He's got kind of a nubby, like a sandpapery surface on there, so you've got a kind of a contrast against the, the shiny and the rough. So this has been James Cum reporting on Ken Price Sculptures here at Matthew Marks. 23 West 24th Street in Chelsea. You can like, share, recommend this, and subscribe. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and critiques below. But we ask you to say, please, thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Gonzalo Salva? Silva. Gonzalo Silva. Thanks, Gonzalo Silva. Thank you.